liberal viewer present. So hard economic times often lead people to consider more extreme philosophies, which may explain the recent increase in the reported popularity of the late Ayn Rand's philosophy of a pure capitalism where everyone pursues purely his or her own self-interest, as Stephen Colbert noted in this excerpt from last week's The Word. Rand wrote about an out-of-control government siphoning the profits of the rich in her 1957 novel, Atlas Shrugged. And according <laughs> to The Economist, Sales of the book have risen sharply since Obama's election, surging every time he announces another spending plan. That's right. Things have gotten so desperate, Americans are actually reading. <laughs> now, I actually started reading Atlas Shrugged more than 20 years ago when I was in high school and ended up reading most of Rand's works and even subscribing to the Objectivist Forum for a while, but by the time I took philosophy classes in college, I'd rejected Rand's philosophy so proud of believing in the virtue of selfishness, and I even wrote a paper titled The Vice of Selfishness that you can find at tinyurl.com slash randpaper, in which I argued that removing the social safety net and allowing people we could help to suffer and even die purely for the sake of economic efficiency is wrong, and I think most Americans even prefer some form of mixed capitalism that regulates the excesses and assists the poor. As Pulitzer Prize-winning Washington Post economics reporter Steve Perlstein pointed out on last week's Real Time with Bill Maher here. So we can do something. We can, we can moderate the downs and moderate the ups. Now, if a conservative was sitting here to say, ah, we can do that. But if you do that, you will give up a little GDP growth every year because the economy will be less efficient. And you know, they're probably right. But most Americans, I think, would like to give up a little GDP growth to get a lot more security. And that's, that's just something... That's a political choice, that's a social Actually, choice. Actually, if, if a conservative were sitting here, they'd say, move to France, commie. Right, well, they probably would. <laughs> of course. There's nothing communist or even socialist in preferring mixed capitalism to pure capitalism, and it makes sense unless you really are totally self-absorbed, as Stephen Colbert ironically indicated by pretending to do what the wealthy did in the novel Atlas Shrugged and going on strike, though Colbert's strike quickly ended, as you can see in this final clip. All right, that's enough, that's enough. I think I've proved my point. And folks... I think I can speak for everyone out there advocating following the advice of a 50-year-old novel set in an America that never existed. That when millions are losing jobs, losing homes, and losing hope, there is nothing more important than putting yourself first. And that's the word. <laughs> so what do you think? Is putting yourself first the most important rule because it promotes economic efficiency? Or do you value other social goals over economic efficiency? And on the related question, is it possible to harness the productive power of capitalism using mixed capitalism that also regulates business excesses and provides a social safety net through progressive taxation? I YouTube, you decide.